Hi. I want to speak to you simply about the true resurrection. Whilst, let's just say, there's a deep respect and love for, for in my heart, for people who uh, have um, faith and belief and, uh, you know, have this sense that because Jesus was physically resurrected, we too, in faith in Christ, will have physical resurrection and somehow be in heaven in relationship with God and with each other. Nobody really knows how that works and what it's like. Although, of course, there are many near-death experiences that people share that are actually rather beautiful and phenomenally um, profound and uh, full of love and light and peace. So this is encouraging. Um, but really what I want to speak about is I, I feel that so much the uh, parables in the Bible and many saints and sages speak in parables and stories because these illustrate beautifully um, a deeper message, a deeper spiritual truth, a deeper universal truth through the stories that are spoken in these different sacred scriptures. So this particular kind of really important aspect of uh, Christianity is this resurrection. Now, of course, reading it on many different levels, of course, there is like the resurrection, uh, death and resurrection in uh, nature, like uh, even a caterpillar that changes, goes into a cocoon and sort of metamorphoses into a butterfly and uh, is absolutely transformed from one thing into another, but it's actually the same thing, essentially. Uh, but what a radical shift and transformation that example in nature is. And very often we see even, of course, um, old ideas or regimes kind of die and fall away and something new is born out of it. In a way, I remember that Jesus points to um, a grain of wheat. When it falls to the ground, it has to die. It has to really break open and for, for the new growth to come through and for a new plant or mighty tree to, to grow from such a tiny seed. So all of these things are examples, in a way, of a deeply transformative change and from this death, there comes new life. Yes, so this is a, this is one beautiful meaning of it. But more than that, in many ways, I just want to point to one thing. If we even go, yes, perhaps there was a, and there is for us a kind of a literal resurrection in some way, heavenly bodies, whatever. So let's just kind of put that in the mix and let that be, let that be there. But I want to go and dig a little deeper because what I feel is that as these stories and metaphors and parables are beautiful illustrations of the universal truth, I also feel on a deeper level we can read the resurrection as, as what? Well, how it has appeared to me is that there is a death that we have to go through. When we are born, we obviously begin to identify with form. We begin to we, we, somebody gives us a name, our parents give us a name or whatever, and we begin to associate ourselves with that name and that form and the gender and the body and all the conditioning piles in upon that. If you're a girl, da, 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 
conditioning um, and even you would be brought up, say, in a particular cultural way or religious way. And all of that adds to the conditioning. Teachers and schooling all adds to the conditioning. And, the, and in many ways, we know it is beautiful to build a healthy ego sense of self. We encourage this even in children um, and as we grow. Uh, but, of course, it comes a point at which that egoic personal identity can begin to feel constricted, can begin to feel confining, and we can begin to believe things about ourselves that are very, very limited and, in fact, can be quite um, punitive even or quite negative. Um, or even arrogant, you know, and uh, so what can happen is that this ego that we've built can begin to feel constricting and maybe its dreams and hopes begin to crash or not work out the way we want it to. This, this, uh, Ego entity begins to really look, especially through suffering and through the um, lessons of life that can bring hurt and disappointment. This can bring a deeper calling in our heart somehow to question, who really am I? What really am I here for? And what is this life about? And who am I? And those that seem to be called by a love of spirit and truth can begin to inquire into this and look deeper. Now this is, I feel, the beginning of the death of the ego. It's not that we have to kill the ego. It's more that we outgrow it. And uh, we begin to see the limitations and naturally we begin to um, fall in love with our true identity that is actually very free from this. And the turning point for me with this was when I felt like, um, for example, Muji said four words to me, you are the self. And somehow I took that in and digested that and really held that in my heart and realized that I began to realize that this egoic identity uh, which with with all of its needs with all of its desires or wanting things and it's rooted in separation it's rooted in feeling like I am the person I've got to make this I've got to make this life work rather than surrender to God you know it feels like it's responsible has to take control has to create goals has to push for what it wants, things like this, I began to feel the, the tyranny of that, the pressure of that, the, 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 the way that the conditioning here somehow in this being had put huge pressure on me. And I could, and, and so there's been a kind of a relaxation and a falling and a surrender somehow. And also this, you are the self. You are the self. Now by the self, I mean the one that is beyond any words, beyond any concepts, the indivisible one, the ineffable one, the unknowable. Vast, these words can only point, can only point to what is completely uncomprehensible to the human mind, if you like. Um, we know this, we know this, this absolute truth and essence of who we are in our deepest nature and in our deepest heart, this immense love really. We are one with God in this. Now this realisation that that you are the self there's so much space in that, there's so much vastness in that. It's like you can unhook from the grip 
the personal identity. Feel the release from the egoic mind form obsession, selfishness, fear, you know, constriction. I want, I need this, I prefer this, I've got to get that. All of that is this thinking that can keep us trapped in a kind of prison in our own minds. So to me, the release of that is the redemption, is the salvation, is the resurrection. Because what comes out of that, if, if that is really turned away from, and you abide in what is here in the heart, the deepest awareness, formless awareness, absolute truth of who you are, then this, you begin to fall in love with, it is just a field of love actually, and a field of light, and it feels infinite, boundless, absolute, uh, so for me, this is the true meaning of resurrection. Even so, while our bodies are warm, we can die before we die. Wake up to this truth. So this is what I wanted to share with you today. All blessings to you. May the power of the Holy Spirit lift you up. To see with the eyes of truth and clarity, beauty and harmony. Thank you.